Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.5 Beta 1. iOS 18.5 Beta 1 is available to developers, and iOS 18.5 Public Beta 1 should be out soon, either by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow, typically. Now, this update came in at a very large 7.65 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, as it had to fully reinstall the operating system. It was about the same size on the iPhone 11 and iPad Pro, and this update was released alongside many other updates such as iPadOS 18.5 Beta 1, macOS 15.5 Beta 1, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.5 Beta 1, VisionOS 2.5 Beta 1, and watchOS 11.5 Beta 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, and as you can see the build number is 22F5042G. This particular build does have a few small changes and updates in it, but it is mostly a bug fix. The first thing it does have in it is a new modem update. So if you're updating from iOS 18.4 to iOS 18.5 beta one, we have an update on the 16 pro max of 1.54.01. The overall build number of the modem can change depending on which phone you have though. As far as new features, like I mentioned, it's mostly bug fixes. However, the welcome screen will show up on all devices updated over the air. But if you updated using a Mac with IPSW files, you'll typically not see that. If we go into about, there's a new feature or change here. And within device coverage, we have a new interface where we have Apple Care Plus at the top telling when it renews. We have the little logo for Apple Care, as well as what's covered specifically. We can also learn more about the benefits, manage the plan, or finish the setup. However, I already did that and that keeps coming back. We can also open the Apple Support app. So that's something they've updated. Apple has also updated mail where they had the new categories that were added more recently. If we go to the three dot menu, you'll see that we now have show priority and show contact photos. If we go into our mail on iOS 18.4, you'll see we only have show priority. So they've changed this a little bit to show those photos, make it a little easier to change directly from mail itself. Within photos, if we go under recently deleted, under recently deleted, we'll view the album and we now have the interface back that we had with earlier iOS 18.4 betas where we can recover all or delete all. So we have that option delete from all devices. This was in earlier betas. They removed it for iOS 18.4's public release. So they've brought it back for this one. I'm not sure why, but that's something they've done. Another thing is there's no battery intelligence yet. So if we plug this into the back here, you'll see it charges, give it a second. And on the main screen, we're not seeing anything about battery intelligence as I know many of you have wanted that back. And as far as other releases, well, we had some releases yesterday with the invites app. So if we go into the app store, the update just contains stability and performance enhancements. Some people have said that it's slightly different. The first time you go into it, create an event, but it looks basically the same to me. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is AirPods firmware updates released the other day. I have a video covering that. However, not too long after they updated them for the AirPods Max with the new lossless audio updates, they pulled the update. There were some issues and now the web page says coming soon. So if we go to that web page on this web page, you can see here, if we scroll down, it now says AirPods Max. USB-C 7E99, and we have a little asterisk there. Now it says coming soon. Prior to this, and in my video, it says you need iOS 18.4, iPadOS 18.4, or macOS 15.4 to install that update. So for whatever reason, they pulled it, there were some issues, and that should be coming back very soon. As far as anything else to note, well, nothing really as far as that goes, but as far as bug fixes, notifications seem to be better. So if we go into notifications, they look much smoother and you'll see everything is working okay. At least it is for me. Micro stutters seem to be gone. However, sometimes those can return after a few days and the wallpaper bug still remains. So if I clear out these notifications, you'll see if I scroll up, the wallpaper desaturates. So that's something we're still seeing. Sometimes in other betas, it would resaturate. And then as far as release notes, well, Apple published them publicly. Let's go ahead and take a look here. And if we go into the public facing release notes, we do have a few things to mention, such as a resolved issue with the Apple Vision Pro app, where it says they fixed on iOS 18.4 beta one, the Apple Vision Pro app launches with a black screen if downloaded from the app store. Upgrade to iOS 15.1 beta one and newer, and the app will launch as expected. They've also resolved an issue with StoreKit, 
writing tools as well for developers. And that's about it. That's all they mention in their release notes. So if we go into the vision pro app, it should launch as expected now. So it looks like it's working fine. However, I never noticed an issue with it before. As far as other new releases, well, iOS 18.5 beta two is expected probably within a couple weeks at this point, maybe next Monday, possibly, but probably on the 14th, they typically do that with the first couple of betas. And then we move to a weekly cycle. As far as iOS 18.5's public release, well, Mark Gurman has said that it's releasing in May. So that could be early May or mid or late May. We just don't know at this point. Apple is also working on iOS 18.6 already. Mac rumors has seen this in their analytics, so they're working on that. But really, iOS 19 is the focus. In June, on June 9th, Apple will have WWDC 2025 or the Worldwide Developer Conference where they'll show off iOS 19 iPad OS 19, Mac OS 16, watch OS 12 and all the others. So that's what they're really focused on at this point. And they may get rid of support for the iPhone 10 R 10 S and 10 S max, according to a recent leaker. So someone that's fairly reliable has mentioned that they've been right in the past. So it looks like they may drop support for those older devices. So that's what we're looking forward to. We do expect a redesign and some major changes. So maybe that's what Apple's waiting for. As far as performance, well, animation is definitely smoother this time around. I know people say this every time, but if we go into music, swipe home, things seem to be generally pretty smooth. Go into the Mercury weather app and the stock weather app from Apple, move over here, maybe go and scroll in the app library. ProMotion is nice and smooth. Everything does feel a little bit smoother for some reason. Now, again, that could take a few days and then go away, but at this point it seems okay. One thing I did notice right away is when you go into the control center and swipe, there was no delay. However, I just saw the delay in just a moment ago, so it looks like it's back. So they haven't fixed everything here as far as the performance, but it does feel a little bit better. As far as overall heat, while well, the phone is still processing in the background, it's going to take a while. So it is a little bit warm. I expect that. And of course, being a first beta, we expect some of this behavior to be normal. So no real issues with that. When it comes to battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll go into battery, battery health, and you'll see my capacity is at 100% with 161 cycles. It hasn't dropped down just yet. I would expect that maybe by 200 cycles, we don't really know yet. And you'll see it does say update is finishing in the background. So that's going to affect performance and battery life. But yesterday, my battery life was four hours and 52 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 51 minutes of screen idle time. And that was on iOS 18.4. You'll see music was working in the background quite a bit and mail as well. Many people are seeing this with the update. So I believe they're probably changing some things as they did fix the notifications with that with 18.4. But today we have almost three hours of screen active time and we're down to 61 percent so overall i think battery life's okay so far but again it takes about a week or so to know this for sure but we'll check it in the weekend follow-up video like normal if we take a look at the storage we'll see what it's taking up as far as apple intelligence so if we go to iphone storage give it a second to load you'll see if we scroll down this one is on iOS 18.4 public release so we can check it side by side here go into iphone storage and down at the bottom under iOS, we'll go down to the same thing and you'll see we're taking up a little bit less for Apple intelligence, at least on this device, 6.28 gigabytes. Originally it was over seven and then 12.39 gigabytes for iOS for a total of 18.66. So it's taking up less space as far as that goes. And then system data, of course, as I've mentioned before, goes up and down from one gigabyte, sometimes to 30 gigabytes. As far as if you should install iOS 18.5 beta one, if you're on 18.4 and you want to fix some issues, definitely avoid the betas. However, there are bugs. So if you want to try it out and you have a secondary device, you definitely could try it. But at this point, it's fairly refined, but 18.4 may get a new release of 18.4.1 to deal with all the other bugs that are out there as well. So at this point, I would hold off, just stay on the public release, and hopefully we get an 18.4.1 as there's issues with things from Square apps to some apps showing up that you deleted. So some odd bugs already. As far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at that using Geekbench 6. Initial benchmarks show 3,523 for single core, 8,659 for multi-core. Now keep in mind, it is updating in the background and the overall score on the iPhone 11 is pretty good as well. If we take a look at the history, I did run this a few times, but compared to iOS 18.4, it's right in the margin of error, especially for single core, maybe a little bit low for multi-core, but pretty good, definitely considering it's still processing in the background.
Now, if you've noticed anything else in iOS 18.5 beta one, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And as I find more features and changes, of course, I'll share those with you as well. So be sure to check out the weekend follow-up video for that. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.